Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to talk about receiving a signal from the International Space Station. So on the 27th of June around 10.35 in the morning local time I was able to pick up a signal from the International Space Station and the signal that I was picking up was from Alexander Gerst or Gerst from Germany and he was basically talking to two schools or gymnasiums and as you can see here they have a lot of equipment but that's because they're also asking him questions from the schools so you can see that they have a front stage where they can ask questions and they also have a few audio equipment and that audio equipment is used to tune the audio to make it sound better for example they also had a live stream, so that's also why they had so much equipment. And here you can see the beginning of one of the live streams and also how they were talking to the astronaut. Delta Papa 0 India Sierra Sierra from Delta Lima 0 India Lima. Could you copy? Over. Delta Lima 0 India Lima. I have that copy loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. So that was pretty cool. So you might be wondering, what kind of equipment do I need to receive the space station? Well, you need an RTL SDR, bare minimum. I was using the R820T2 from RTLSDR.com and I was using the N500 Omnidirectional Antenna. And I also extended it fully and I was also sitting outside. So that's also quite important because while the signal is quite strong, you should be sitting outside or have the antenna outside when you're receiving the space station. The small antenna in the top left is not really ideal for picking up the space station. So here I will show you how to receive the International Space Station. You have to be around 145 megahertz and or 145.8 megahertz. And you don't need a lot of samples like the width or bandwidth because this, the signal is very narrow so you can probably do with a lot less than 1 million samples per second that I chose here. So in case you're receiving then you select RTL SDR USB and then you select NFM And if you want to record the IQ file like I did, then make sure you select baseband. And if you only want audio, then select audio and hit record. Keep in mind that when you click record, that it will not record forever. I think the maximum time limit is around five minutes. So be careful of that. Now I will open the IQ file and you will be able to listen to what I recorded. So first I set it to 145.8 megahertz and then I zoom in on the signal. And you will notice something interesting and that is that the signal will shift to the left. It will actually start from the right and then it will go towards left. So as you can see the signal is going to the left and that's because of the Doppler effect. So as you can see, the signal wasn't super strong, but you could hear the, uh, the astronaut on the space station. That was the guy, Alexander Gierst, that was talking right there. So uh, that was quite cool because the space station is around 400 kilometers away, which is quite a bit. So I've been planning to do this for months and I also tried to pick it up at night and other times, 
And then I finally found a time of window where I could pick it up, so I was really happy that I finally got something to show you guys. So you might be wondering, well, how can I pick up the ISS? And how do I know when it's passing over me because it's not stationary? Well, you can use, for example, the ISS detector app on your mobile phone like I do. Or you can also use Orbitron as well. Now, I prefer ISS detector because I can just look at my phone and I can also see the elevation. So, for example, you have the degrees next to the time. So if you look at the first entry, it will start it will start being visible within range around three minutes to midnight and then one minute and a half past midnight. And the elevation will be 21 degrees. Now that's uh, the max elevation. So it's like a curve when it passes over you and it looks quite beautiful as well. So you should definitely try it out and just uh, see how it looks like. It will look like a moving star or maybe an airplane, but it's not blinking. So it will just be a constant small bright spot. And if it's around 30 to 40 in elevation or higher, then it will uh, look quite interesting or quite beautiful. So if we take a look at one of the entries, you can see here that it says that there is 18 minutes until it passes over, for example, and the pass in this case will be 6 minutes and 9 seconds. It also has like a, uh, like a GPS style feature, or not a GPS, but a compass like feature. So if you move the red, or not the red, the yellow circle towards the blue spot by moving your phone a little bit down, I think, or up in this case, then your phone will point uh, approximately towards where the ISS will begin, the overpass. So that's pretty cool. Plus, in this case, you can also see the moon. So you can also point your antenna towards the moon in case you're using a directional antenna. So that's quite cool so that you can track the ISS in case it's cloudy, for example. And you can also see in the lower right corner the start elevation. So on the details page, we have more stuff. We have the start and end time and duration. We have the max elevation and the starting and ending elevation. And the magnitude, which is like the magnitude used in astronomy as well. So in this case, I think lower is better. I can't remember. So that's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned and subscribe.